We now move on to Pirkei Avot 1.8. That is the eighth text in the first chapter of Pirkei Avot. We start off with Yehuda ben Tabai, Judah son of Tabai, and Shimon ben Shetach, Simon the son of Shetach, received it from them. Now, just as we have seen twice before in this first chapter of Pirkei Avot, this phrase, and they received it from them, is part of this chain of pairs. I mentioned in a previous video that there are actually five such statements throughout the entirety of the first chapter, which later then gets repeated once further in the second chapter. But really, it's a feature of this first chapter of pairs receiving from another set of pairs. What they are receiving is unclear. Ostensibly, they are receiving the Torah, but isn't that really for the entirety of the Jewish people? Another way of understanding it could be as a certain mantle of leadership, but not just leadership, but almost a sense of either leadership imbued with uh, maybe Jewish leadership or perhaps a more specific Torah-oriented or rabbinic uh, sense of, of leadership. It's vague. It's unclear. I'll, I'll grant that. And just as we have seen in the two previous iterations of this phrase of they received it from them, we now have the first of these proto-rabbis, pre-rabbis, giving his advice. And just as we have seen with the previous pre proto-rabbis, he offers three pieces of advice. Now these, now this time we are going to see a very clear theme running through, which is about judging. Now, it's interesting because we did, we did see from just two texts ago, Joshua, son of Prachia, mentioned something about judging, right? This one is going to be 100% about uh, judging. So here's what he said. Here's what he says. Here's the first one. Do not play the part of an advocate. Now, what he means is when you are serving as a judge, don't take a side. Don't serve as a, as a lawyer, as an advocate. You have a, a job here as the judge. You are to remain impartial and weigh the facts of the case. Here's the second. When the litigants are standing before you, look upon them both as if they were guilty. This is very much opposite of what we see in the American legal system where People who come in front of the court are considered innocent before, innocent until we know them otherwise as guilty. Here, what Yehuda, son of Tobai, advocates for is to, un, to look at both of the litigants as equally guilty until we can, we can get somewhere. Then, for the third aspect of his, his set of wisdom statements here, he says, when they leave your presence, and again, still putting yourself in the shoes of a judge, look upon them both as if they were innocent when they have accepted the judgment. This is so deeply fascinating. What he is saying here is, why are they even coming in front of a, of a court? Why are they coming in front of a judge or a set of judges? Maybe because there's something, there's friction. There's clearly some friction going on and whether one person is totally innocent and the other is totally guilty or who knows maybe there could be a mix of guilt going on but when everybody has accepted the judgment then there is that friction between them between these two parties has been removed and now there's a sense of peace and that is why he is saying Look upon them both as innocent. Look upon them both as being meritorious. They both accept the, the way that the case has been judged, has been adjudicated, and now they're, they're on their own ways. They're fine. So this is uh, an interesting set of three pieces of advice that Judah, son of Tobai, offers here in this one, all along the lines of judging. All right. Well, thank you so much for watching.